Finding a good angle for these videos is sometimes the hardest thing to do. I don't have much time because I'm working from home and I'm using my lunch break to record this video, but the spirit just came over me and I really wanted to. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra. In this video, we're going to be looking at five sweaters from a commercial retailer and we are going to be matching them up with hand knit sweater patterns that you could use to recreate the inspiration. This is something that I love doing. I've done so far two fairly large projects that were inspired by store-bought sweaters that either I've owned in the past or in one instance I saw a picture of online. It was way out of my price range so I decided to recreate a handmade version of it. And if that notion appeals to any of you, perhaps you would be, perhaps you might be inspired by this video a little bit. Every store-bought sweater that I talk about in this video, I'm going to link below. I created a Ravelry bundle that has all of the patterns I'm going to be talking about in this video, as well as a link to the store-bought sweater that inspired me to select that pattern. The retailer or website that we are going to be focusing on today is cost, cos.com. I was watching a YouTuber that, and it was unrelated, I think it was about fashion in general and not anything handmade or hand knit. And she mentioned this website that I had never heard of. And I poked around and I saw a lot of items that I really liked. And from what I can tell, these items tend to be focused more on natural fibers, higher quality, a relatively high price point um, compared to a lot of the places I tend to shop at more frequently. And for me, I saw a lot of pieces on this website that I really liked, but on principle, I try my best not to purchase knitwear that I could make myself. So a lot of the sweaters on this website I really liked and if I didn't knit, I would probably buy a couple of them. But because I knit, I just tell myself, you know what, it's not worth it, just make a handmade version. Even though in many cases, we end up spending more in, on the yarn and definitely in labor to bring these pieces to life compared to purchasing it from a commercial retailer. But as I'm sure many of you can relate, a lot of the joy comes from creating something with your own hands. So I don't think it's necessarily a loss for me to decide to knit these pieces as opposed to buying them from this website. But that's just something to consider. Sometimes the payoff is not worth it. These patterns that I'm gonna be sharing, I would, if given the choice, I would definitely choose to knit these pieces instead of buy them. And if you're anything like me, you would probably agree with that. Okay, so the first sweater I'm going to talk about from the Cost website is this Funnel Neck Pure Cashmere Sweater. I have a thing for cashmere and I am going to make it my personal mission to knit myself a cashmere sweater at some time within the next year to a year and a half. I really have been jonesing for a cashmere sweater. I've never owned one, at least I don't think I have, and I certainly have never knit one, but I have touched many a cashmere yarns, many a cashmere sweaters, and the idea of knitting myself a cashmere sweater is really, really appealing. And if I move forward with that plan, this is definitely a piece that I would try to create with cashmere yarn. I have a couple of patterns that I've selected with this funnel neck pure cashmere sweater in mind. And I will start with the salty sweater. So this is a pattern by Kadri and it's actually a pattern that I knit a couple of years ago and I ended up gifting it to a family member. I love the way it turned out and it 
is always something that I intended to revisit. But the salty sweater, all over stockinette, two by two rib, drop shoulder, considerable amount of positive ease, and all of the ways that matter, it is very similar to the inspiration. One key thing that it does not have is the shoulder detail. So when I look at the cost sweater, I see this continuous line of knit stitches that trail from the back of the neck down the shoulder. And I've seen a lot of patterns as of late that incorporate some type of shaping like this at the shoulder. From what I understand, it might be called English tailoring. I think that might be the technique that it is inspired by perhaps but either way it is a very visually appealing element that I see in a lot of store-bought sweaters and personally I'm starting to see in a lot of hand knitting patterns so I share the salty sweater but the salty sweater does not have a shoulder detailing shoulder shaping like this so an alternative that I would recommend is the Colvin DK pattern by Julie Hoover the shoulder shaping is not exactly like the sweater on the cost website, but it does have that continuous line and what appears to be some pretty intentional increases along that shoulder line that creates a visual effect. And I like the way that looks. And I think that the Colvin DK sweater more closely achieves that effect compared to the salty sweater. Now, one difference with the Colvin DK sweater is that all of the trim is one by one rib instead of two by two rib. But I've said this before, something like the type of rib that a sweater uses is probably the easiest thing to swap out and customize. So if I am keen on achieving that shoulder detailing, then I would definitely lean more towards the Colvin DK. These are both DK weight patterns, by the way. And another key difference with the Colvin DK versus the Salty sweater is that the Colvin DK sweater is seamed. It is knit in pieces and seamed together, which is something that appeals to me, but for a lot of people, it might turn you off. So the next sweater from the Cost website that I wanted to highlight is the Cropped V-neck Wool Sweater. So it is another, what I would consider to be staple wardrobe piece, all over stockinette, one by one ribbing on the trim. And the sleeves and the body, there are no ribbing at the bottom there. Which is really interesting because I think a majority of the sweaters I tend to see have some type of ribbed trimming all over. But I think whatever sweater that you might knit to recreate this, that element would be really easy to swap out and mimic the finishing here. So instead of doing ribbing at the cuff, you could do an eye cord at the cuffs and the body. Sweater that I would knit to recreate this sweater is the Paw Sweater by Morka Knit. So this is knit with sport weight yarn and it is also a saddle shoulder, I believe is technically what this is. And so there is a section of horizontal stockinette that goes across the back of the shoulders. The key elements about the Paul sweater that I think makes it a prime candidate to recreate the cost sweater is one, the fact that it is a saddle style shoulder. I believe this is a saddle shoulder, but what I'm talking about is that there is a horizontal um, section of stockinette that's perpendicular to the direction that the rest of the sweater is knit and it covers the back of the shoulders and continues down each arm and the paw sweater very perfectly captures that effect it's a, it has a very similar visual effect to the cost sweater the other key similarity I think is with the v-neck itself so I've seen a lot of hand knit v-neck sweaters and in my personal opinion, I think many of them, they are a bit too wide, they are a bit too deep. It has a relatively close fitting v-neck and the rib itself is rather thick along the neck. And I think that is a key similarity um, that stood out to me with the Paul sweater. 
other than that the the arms on or the sleeves on the paw sweater are finished off with one by one rib as well as the body but as i mentioned before that would be a modification if you want to mimic the finishings on the store-bought sweater but yeah overall i think this is a pretty solid dupe and if you want to create this cropped v-neck wool sweater from cos you can knit the paw sweater by more knits and I think you would be really satisfied with the outcome. The third sweater on this list is the half zip funnel v-neck wool sweater. This is another drop shoulder. This video is full of drop shoulders, but I promise you um, at least one of them is not a drop shoulder. So this is all over texture and what appears to be brioche. Brioche is not a stitch that I have personally knit, but I really do want to. And I think a pattern like this will be the perfect type of project to highlight the texture of brioche. It does have a zipper, which is an intimidating um, technique for me. I have never knit anything with a zipper and I do want to develop that skill, if you will, and create a piece like this. The biggest thing that I was looking for when trying to find a hand knit version of this sweater is the brioche, the all over brioche texture and the zipper. And the pattern that I settled on to recreate this sweater is the Lanark sweater by Rebecca Klo. So it is all over brioche. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. This is half fisherman's rib. I don't know the difference personally. I cannot look at it and tell, be able to pick from a lineup, which is brioche, which is half fisherman's rib, which is half brioche, which is full fisherman's rib. I, is there a difference? I don't even know. But visually, I think it creates a very similar effect. And who knows if the store-bought version that I mentioned is or is not brioche. I don't know. If it looks like it, and whatever. Okay, you, you get what I mean. So anyway, it's half fisherman's rib and not brioche. But again, visually, it achieves the same effect. Um, and again, the key elements of the zipper front and the texture itself is perfectly captured in this piece. Um, the key difference that this pattern maybe does not have is the texture um, design along the collar. So the store-bought sweater has these sort of strategically placed increases um, that frame the zipper and the Lanark sweater is just straight vertical half fisherman's rib all over. And I personally am not skilled enough to add these type of visual designs in any type of brioche or half fisherman's rib or whatever. I suspect it is a modification that you could implement if you really, really wanted to. However, other than that key difference, I think the Lanark sweater really effectively captures the same vibe as the cost sweater. And speaking of zippers, this next sweater on the list also has a zipper. It also has what I'm probably incorrectly assuming to be brioche perhaps half fisherman's rib. This is the Alpaca Blend Zip Up Cardigan on the COS website. Now, this appears to have some raglan shaping along the arms and again, the all over brioche-like texture. And it also has a full zip front. So this is very much a what I would consider to be an advanced knit. I would be really nervous to tackle something like this. I guess if I can knit something like the Lanark sweater, which I have not attempted, then I think this would be a sort of natural step up from that in terms of pushing your techniques. I really don't know because I haven't done it. But the hand knit version or the hand knit sweater that I would knit to recreate this piece is the Cardigan Catan by Pasquale Designs. And I'm sure I butchered that. I do apologize. Visually, it has a very similar effect to the Alpaca Blend zip up sweater on the COS website. And it does have the higher collar, very similar to the Inspiration sweater. And again, the full zip. The similarities are very in line with each other. And 
just from looking at it, there's nothing that I would pick out to say, uh, this is a key difference between A and B. I think the only thing that really sticks out to me is the ease. So the ease on the cost sweater, it has a bit roomier fit on the model. Whereas on the handmade recreation, it's a bit more close fitting, but I mean, that comes down to picking a larger or smaller size to achieve the ease that you would want. And the last sweater from the cost website that I would want to recreate is the ribbed pure cashmere turtleneck sweater. We've had a full circle moment because the first pattern I talked about was a cashmere one. And now this sweater I'm talking about is also a cashmere. And it appears to be all over a two by two rib and there are maybe some cables or increased um, texture elements along the front of the sweater. And it has some raglan shaping along the shoulders. And the sweater that I would knit to recreate this piece is a twist loop sweater by Other Loops. So this sweater is, I think overall, it gives a very similar visual effect, but Obviously, looking at both of them side by side, they are very different sweaters. This is the closest sweater that I was aware of that closely sort of mimics the effect of the cost sweater. And so the key differences are obviously the texture patterns themselves. So the other loop sweater has some, I would say more traditional full twisted cables um, that cover the center front and go along the sides. Whereas the cost sweater, again, has those cables that sort of just branch out, don't necessarily cross over each other. Different motifs, but I think similar effect, like I said, for the overall sweater. And I don't personally think it would be too difficult to create your own cable chart that mimics the, the cost sweater and sort of overlay it on to the other loop sweater. The other key difference is the collar itself. So the cost sweater has a straight, um, non-folded mock neck collar, whereas the twist loop sweater has a, tr not traditional, but I think it's a pretty popular style of collar and hand knit sweaters these days, but it has a basic crew neck with a folded down and one by one rib. So this, I would modify the twist loop sweater to just have the, that have, the the two by two rib continue up the collar and I wouldn't fold it so that I think would really closely mimic the cost sweater those are five store-bought sweaters and the patterns that I would knit to recreate them with a handmade version let me know if you like this video and you think I should do this same type of video with other stores Maybe you have a favorite online retailer that has really nice sweaters that you would want to recreate. I do this sort of exercise mentally all the time. If I'm online shopping or shopping in person and I see a knit sweater, I think, oh, I could make that. I think we all as knitters collectively have that thought when we're shopping. But sometimes it's not so easy to just create something from scratch and it is a little less intimidating to approach recreating that piece with an already existing pattern so hopefully this video has inspired you to explore projects like that and yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye